Nobody wins any war. Uh, the only thing that happens is one side loses far more than the others. We are in a very scary situation. And is it going to affect the financial markets? Absolutely. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for October 9th through October 16th, 2023, while supplies last. This week we feature two different specials, Silver Morgan Rounds at $2.09 over spot from CNT, and Half Ounce Gold Eagles at $1.15 over melt. First, the Morgan Round from CNT celebrates the classic Morgan dollar, but is four nines fine and one full troy ounce of silver. It's also IRA eligible, and at just $2.09 over spot, a great way to stack four nines fine one ounce silver at a low premium. Next, the Gold Eagle is one of the most popular gold bullion coins in the world, providing incredible recognizability and investor trust. The half ounce Eagle adds a further degree of flexibility and liquidity. They come 40 to a tube and are available at just 115 over melt while supplies last. They're also IRA eligible. And if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, Call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend Bob Moriarty from 321gold.com and 321energy. He is also a Marine, Naval Aviator, and financial author. Bob, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, it's good to see you. I, I just love that background. You you worked very hard to pick up something beautiful. Uh, no, I know. We're not in our main office today. So apologies to our viewers here, but it's the best we can do right now. What I did want to first discuss with you, obviously, the Israel conflict right now. Um, your perspective on what is happening. Strange enough, and literally, you would have to go to the internet 10 or 15 times a day to see all of the things going on. Uh, there is a conflict between Hamas and Israel. Uh, Gaza has been in an open-air prison for 16 years. Uh, Hamas attacked Israel on Saturday. Somewhere around 900 or 1,000 Israelis have been killed. There's two issues there. One is, was it correct for Hamas to attack Israel? And I think the answer to that is fairly obvious. Uh, it's perfectly legal under the Geneva Convention to to try to break out of a prison if you're being occupied. And the Gaza is occupied. It's that simple. It's, there's been a blockade for 16 years. However, you get into the issue of war crimes, and it certainly appears that Hamas went way beyond what's acceptable in conflict. However, Israel's response is just as evil as what Hamas did. Let me, let me read a couple of headlines to you from CNN right now. Okay, the top says brutality of Hamas attacks in Israel comes to light. And that's absolutely correct. There were hundreds of defenseless, unarmed civilians who were no threat to Hamas, who were killed in cold blood. Uh, uh, um, the IDF general says, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, talking about butchered women and babies found after the assault. There are three aircraft carriers on the way to the Mediterranean, British and one British and two Americans. And of course, aircraft carriers bring peace and tranquility wherever they show up. So it's uh, scary. There's a, a total blockade on Gaza. There's 2.3 million people in the world's largest open air prison, Israel has shut off all food, 
all electricity and all water. So to punish three or 4,000 Hamas uh, terrorists, Israel is going to collectively punish 2.3 million people in Gaza. The UN has already come out and said that's a war crime. The EU has come out and said that's collective punishment and that's a war crime. Israel is now attacking Lebanon. They have said that if Hezbollah uh, invades northern Israel, they will nuke Damascus. They're also talking about nuking Iran. So we, we're closer to World War III than we have ever been before, and the crazies are in charge. We have a few, uh, few viewers' questions here about the conflict here. Um, the first one is, do you think the new Gaza conflict affects your time frame and expectations in the pricing of the stock markets, bond markets, interest rates, or any other economic markets you are currently analyzing? Uh, the answer to that is absolutely correct. Now, is this part of something that I predicted? Absolutely not. The the economic reasons for a financial crash are still in place. However, if nuclear bombs start going off, believe me, uh, the financial markets are going to be affected as we have never seen in history. And the chance of that happening are very high. Uh, uh, do you, you know, obviously you followed this. Who are the only people talking about diplomacy? The Russians and the Chinese. The Chinese prime minister said Israel needs to uh, come to some sort of an agreement with the Palestinians, which is obviously true, and it's been true for 75 years. And the Russians, and this is both Putin and Lavrov, have said we need to use diplomacy. And I, I totally agree. Uh, nothing is going to be served by Israel murdering hundreds of thousands of Arabs. Turkey has said if there is an invasion of Gaza, and I think the invasion has already started, that Turkey is going to enter the conflict, Syria is going to enter the conflict, Iran is going to enter the conflict, and this gets real scary real quick. Now, if you go back to when you were in junior high school or high school, there was always some game, baseball, football, whatever, and there was one kid that nobody ever wanted to be on the team because if they he was on the team, they knew they were going to lose. So if you were going to select a partner to participate in a war, would you select the kid that lost in Vietnam and Syria? and Ukraine, and Pakistan, and Afghanistan, and Iraq, and Iran, that, that would be the worst thing in the world. The, the U.S. military is totally, absolutely delusional now, and the sexual preference of soldiers is far more important than the ability to actually fight a war. So, so what Israel is doing is they're going to use the United States to attack the enemies of Israel. And, and strange enough, nobody wins any war. Uh, the only thing that happens is one side loses far more than the others. We are in a very scary situation. And is it going to affect the financial markets? Absolutely. We have another viewer's question about really how this is going to play out in the Middle East um, in the next few months. It sounds like you've largely answered that. Um, obviously, the U.S. is getting involved, but what what other countries outside of the Middle East do you think are going to be involved here? Everybody. Uh, what's happened in the United States created this monster by by getting Russia to attack Ukraine, and it was a deliberate plan uh, 
The Rand Corporation was paid millions of dollars to tell the U.S. Army this is what you need to do to get Russia to invade Ukraine. It basically it was all you have to do is, is try to get Ukraine into NATO. We have known for 30 years of how dangerous that was. So we, we started this war, and as soon as you start a war, everybody starts picking sides. So basically the answer is, <clears throat> this will be a world war, and it will be World War III, and, and it could be far shorter than anybody imagines, because once nuclear weapons start being used, uh, the gloves are off, and the world will be destroyed in short order. If someone is not talking about diplomacy and peace, you know the crazies are in charge. Now, when it comes to uh, economic collapse versus the world war that you think could be uh, on the horizon here, this viewer wants to know which one do you think will come first? The chicken or the egg question? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a really good question. Uh, I, I've always hoped that the economic collapse would come first because then it would uh, make everybody realize why war is such a bad solution. Uh, wars are really expensive. If you want to bankrupt a country, all you have to do is spend a lot of time going to war. The reason the United States is bankrupt now, so we essentially, I think we've started 210 wars since World War II, and they're really expensive. Unless you've been in a war, you have no idea how expensive it is. It costs a million dollars a year to keep a U.S. soldier in Afghanistan. The cost of fuel was 50 to to $100 a gallon to actually get the fuel to soldiers in Afghanistan. And if you look at it, we lost the war. We spent $2.3 trillion in many of the weapons that Hamas was using to murder in cold blood this last weekend uh, came from either Ukraine or Afghanistan. I did want to shift gears to the financial system now. Um, I know we did cover that a bit, but we do have some viewers questions on, I know about six to eight weeks ago, you said that the crash was about to start. Uh, and it seems like we have seen a downturn start in the stock market. And you think that this is really the second phase of the stock market crash starting right now. Yeah, if you look at it, I actually made two predictions. One was that the stock market had topped, and the other was that we would see the start of a crash in six to eight weeks. Uh, if you look at a chart of the NASDAQ or the S&P or the Dow, I, I was absolutely correct. The top uh, was in, in uh, late July. We have seen the top. And on September 20th, when the Fed came out with, with their uh, interest rates, they said that the interest rates would go higher and longer. And bonds have, have crashed since then. 30-year uh, mortgage interest rate is now up to right at 8%. Uh, 10-year and 20-year and 30-year bonds are very close to 5%. Those came close to destroying the financial system a year ago, and interest rates were lower a year ago. So all of the pieces are in play for the system to blow up uh, no matter what happens. And, and strange enough, World War III w would, would be a good excuse. Uh, the Iranians, uh, let's presume for a minute that, that Hezbollah does attack Israel. Uh, Israel does nuke Damascus, as they have threatened. They nuke Tehran. Iran still has the ability to close the Gulf of Hormuz. If they close the Gulf of Hormuz, you're going to see $300 a barrel of oil. So uh, it, it's going to be obvious soon that uh, we've had an utter catastrophe, but all of the pieces are in play now for bad things to happen. 
I think $300 a barrel oil obviously would have a huge impact on the average person out there. You know, inflation would go through the roof. What other impacts do you think, you know, a crashing stock market, bond market, and high inflation would have, for example, in the banks and other other sectors of the economy? I'm trying to think of a good way to put it. The impact of interest rates is far more important than realize. The the listed derivatives is about six hundred trillion dollars. And I know there's a lot of people saying there there's a quadrillion or two quadrillion in derivatives. Uh, including derivatives that are off the books. I'm not sure if that's true or not. But if you actually look at derivatives, most of the derivatives are interest rate related. So when you have a move from a half a percent interest to, to say, 5 percent interest, you just blow uh, $400 trillion of derivatives straight to hell. And uh, the impact of that has not been seen but it's absolutely going on behind the scenes and something is going to break soon. Israel or no Israel. Okay. So, so the, the, the impact of the fed saying that the interest rates are going to go longer and higher. It's a catastrophe. They're going to go longer and higher until something breaks. But the one thing that's guaranteed is something's going to break. Now, if we turn to the precious metal markets, I know we've seen quite a bit of a pullback as as we've seen the stock market fall. Um, We have seen a bit of a rebound in the last few days here. Uh, Your perspective, I'm assuming at the end of the day, the short term moves right now aren't going to look like anything compared to what's what's to come but your perspective well again if if you got three hundred dollar barrel oil you probably got three or four thousand dollar gold we're going to see things and and you you can remember i've been saying since march that we were going to see things in the next six months that we've never seen before in history and i'm going to say that was probably fairly accurate prediction on september 28th uh using the daily sentiment indicator i said gold was going to turn silver was going to turn the currencies were going to turn the dollar was going to turn bonds were going to turn uh even orange juice and and in fact all of those commodities have turned so you're saying that silver and gold have gone down actually in relative terms they haven't gone down that much. Silver went from, I think, 26 bucks to 22 bucks. That's not even a big move. OK, gold went from near 2000 to 1800. That is not a, that's 10%. That's no big deal. What has happened, uh, they've come out and shown that the bond market has had the greatest crash in history with bonds being down 56 percent between 2020 and today and that is a catastrophic loss someone has lost a lot of money and that hasn't floated to the surface yet the money that has been lost floating to the surface what does that mean to you and and how, how will that play out at its very peak the cryptocurrencies had a value in excess of three trillion dollars. Today, they've got a value of about uh, one trillion, one point one, one point two trillion. Uh, Two trillion dollars has just evaporated. It went to cryptocurrency heaven. There are real companies, real people that have suffered extraordinary losses and everyone's doing everything they can to cover it up. But those losses did take place. Uh, people who could afford a mortgage at 3% interest are realizing that 99% of Americans can no longer afford housing at 8% interest. Now, that's catastrophic. I mean, I, I'm seeing things that have never happened before in my lifetime. And quite candidly, 8% interest is not very high. We had 18% interest in 1980, and we could see that again. 
So you start getting into stupid numbers with oil, uh, with energy in general, and with gold and silver. I, I mean, absolutely stupid. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk to you, and I, I should mention this to you now, I want to send you two or three charts because something that that every gold bug believes is absolutely incorrect. And that is to say gold and silver have been suppressed. So I want you to give me any 10 year period between uh, 1900 and today. And I'm going to give you a couple of charts that show the price actions of nine different metals. If it's true that gold and silver were suppressed, then it means they have to be lower relative to aluminum, to tin, to iron, to copper, to nickel, to lead. And in fact, the charts that I'm gonna send you and you should put, you should attach, will show that, in fact, gold and silver have gone up more. So for gold and silver to have gone up more than seven other metals, it means they couldn't possibly have been suppressed because if they were suppressed, the other metals were suppressed even more. However, there is the wild card, and the wild card is that if the dollar collapses, gold and silver go terminal, Okay, or if World War Three starts, there will be a rush into safety like we have never seen before. So I, I absolutely discount suppression. I absolutely discount manipulation. However, there are things that could and are happening that will have enormous impact on on all real resources. And I'll go back to something we've talked about a lot, and that is a basic conflict between the debt-based system of the West and a resource-based system of the East. That has a lot to do with what's happening right now. And, and the EU and the United States and NATO and Israel are betting that the debt-based system will survive. And and I don't see any way that it can. So I I think that Russia and China and the the BRICS nations at least understand there's a problem, and the West is utterly clueless. All right. Well, Bob, we really appreciate your time today. We have to uh, ask the most important viewers question now. I could listen to Bob all evening, no matter what the subject matter. I love hearing about his antics as a pilot and his stories about his dog facts and of course his chickens so uh, take your choosing a story about being a pilot uh, your dog facts or your chickens well that's 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 a really great question because we've spent a lot of time talking about facts lately we haven't said anything about the chickens and the reason we haven't said anything about the chickens is most of them got eaten they didn't get eaten by me they got eaten by a fox so I decided I had to regroup. So I, I, I took four eggs and hatched them. And they're they're about ready to start producing eggs. But I, I've got a perfect situation between facts and the chickens. I I live by myself, which I hate. And, and unfortunately, I have to cook by myself, which I hate. And I get a lot of leftovers, which I hate. So I feed the leftovers to the chickens. Okay, Uh, let me think how many. I've got one rooster and four hens and three uh, teenage hens. So I've got uh, seven hens and, and one cockerel. They take care of the leftovers. And the beauty is that I've got facts trained and he washes the dishes. Oh, it's great. I mean, it works perfectly. I don't have to do anything. Okay. I don't have to put up with leftovers. I don't have to wash the dishes. I just have to, you know, eat. Fantastic. Well, we'll all be uh, very, very excited to 
uh, eat over <laughs> at your place with the clean dishes there. But uh, we really appreciate your time today. Uh, Bob, any last thoughts before we let you go? And where can our viewers find you? We'll put a link to all your books on Amazon as well. Right. Uh, here's what I'm going to say. And while I could speak with levity sometime, I will say I have never seen a more dangerous period in history, not because of the events, but because of the idiots in charge who are doing things that are ultra dangerous. This is a good time to keep spare food, to keep some spare cash, to keep gasoline or diesel in the vehicle. The potential for very bad things happening uh, is, is ultra high. And, and it's a good time to be conservative and naturally to try to protect your your financial future. You need to own some gold and silver and you need to be able to put your hands on it. All right. Fantastic. Well, Bob, we really appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much and God bless. Okay. It's good talking to you. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, Metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.